All right, video number two. So I, I had to stop the last one because I actually just found out I was a close contact for, for COVID. So, so I'm at home now. So I'm at home now doing it. All right, so picking up where we left off. Um, what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to uh, figure out for the last one, though. If you actually put in the square root of 12, it would be 3.6, right? So it's let's say it's approximately equal to positive or negative 3.6. Oh, sorry, 3.5. It doesn't really matter. Just close to that, right? So then let's put down our, our numbers on our, on our line here, right, for our intervals. So this would be negative 3.5, about 0, and 3.5. All right. So then from there, let's figure out our our intervals, what's happening here, right? So if I, if I look at f double prime, or the second derivative of x for negative infinity to negative 3.5, right? So if you start throwing in, let's say, say negative four into this, what happens is you get a negative number, right? And when I cube it, I get like an even bigger negative number. So yeah, this actually does not exist over here. Doesn't exist on that end, which, okay, makes sense. Negative one, right, for our test value. Then that would be, well, for this section, right, because of this one, that's coming out negative. This would come out positive for this section. And then in the bottom, if I put negative one in there, it's gonna be squared. Yeah, it's still gonna come out positive, right? But overall, negative times positive, positive, it's coming out negative, right? So that thing's negative. And then in this section, we've got uh, like one. If I put one in there, well, it'd be really similar, but this first one would have been positive. So positive, positive, positive. So this would be positive. And then after 3.5, we're going to run into the same problem we had before with it not existing, right? We're trying to take the square root of a negative over there. So this would be does not exist. Okay, so then the graph of f of x, right, would look like, well, it wouldn't exist over there. But then here, we know we're going to have a concave down. In this interval, we're going to have a concave, concave up. Okay. I think we're ready. I think we can uh, we can start to graph this guy. Well, actually, you know what? Sorry, we should we should give our point of inflection as well, right? So our point P O I. Well, in this case, it was well, we kind of already did that, right? That was going to be our our zero, right? Which makes sense. It's where it's going from concave um, down to concave up. So that's going to be zero. That's going to be when x is equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, which would also be when y is equal to zero. So the point of inflection here is going to be zero comma zero. Now, why isn't it, you know, because looking at this, didn't we say it was also square root of 12, like plus or minus? It is, but it's not going to be a point of inflection because the graph doesn't even exist over here, right? So it's not inflecting. It's not going from like an up to a, to a down. It just doesn't even exist over there. So that's not a point of inflection here or here. All right, so let's let's sketch this thing out. So well, let's just any. We know there's a point of inflection of zero, zero, which is also our x-intercept. Let's go back up and look at our x-intercepts again. So x-intercept, we also know it's from negative two to two is what where our interval is going to be on. Um, yeah, so okay, so it's going to be negative two or two, and it crosses right there too, doesn't it? So it's going to be at, here, you know what, let's make wait, this negative two so it stretches it out a little bit. And two. Okay. We also know we have a maximum at negative root two, two. Okay, so negative root two is gonna be at um, like negative 1.4, right? So if this is one, then this would be like negative 0.4, like over there, right? So there, and then I'll make it up to there, right? So this will be two on my axis up there. Okay, there's that one. And then it was kind of a mirror image. It was, it was odd, right? Remember the symmetry of this thing was odd? So I'm immediately thinking that, well, this point up here would be the same, but it would be down it would be down here, right there. So it's symmetric. And then I think we got enough just to piece this together. So this would be up to my max, down, and 
then up. And then there you go. We could also check to make sure with our areas of concavity, right? We knew that we were concave down in this interval, right? Which makes sense. We were concave up in the next interval. So, yep, that should be it.